So feel free to have a chair nearby. A couple blocks might also come in handy if you have those. And wall space we're going to utilize today. But we're going to start our practice this morning um, sitting. So find a comfortable seat, whether you're in a chair, whether you're on the floor, on a cushion, on a block. So whatever position you want to start your practice in, we'll begin there. Okay. So finding your comfortable seat, wherever that may happen to be. I'm going to sit on the ground on a block, but again, you don't have to copy what I'm doing because it doesn't matter so much. Just sit in a way that lets you feel the support underneath you, where you can settle both sitting bones into that support. That's it. And you can feel as you rest, whatever part of your body is in contact with your support. Let's maybe close the eyes or allow the gaze to soften as we rest and relax the hands on the thighs or wherever they happen to comfortably land. So let's start to tune into the nature of the breath this morning. Notice the inhale as it moves in through your nose. And feel the exhale as the breath leaves through your nose. No need to change the breath, just become more conscious of it. Sense the movements of your inhale and feel the movements of your exhale. How does the breath move your body this morning? And where do you sense those movements happening easily and freely? And then let's work a little bit today with hands on while we breathe. So I invite you to bring the hands to the upper part of your chest, maybe just under the collarbones, one hand on either side, opening the palms in a way that lets you sense this part of your body. And just feeling for any movement that's there with each breath. No need to make the movement bigger. However subtle, however large the movements are under your hands, feel them as you breathe. Feeling the movements here in the upper part of your chest, lungs, ribs. And then let's go ahead and bring the hands further down, sort of around the, maybe towards the sides of the ribs, place like the heels of your hands and your fingers wrapping around to more the fronts of your ribs. And as you find that position, try to get as comfortable as you can into the shoulders again. And let's sense the movements here into the lower lungs the lower ribs, out into the sides of your ribs, feeling for the movement with each inhale and each exhale. And you may notice that your hands move slightly away from one another as you breathe in and your ribs and lungs expand. And then you can feel how the hands might come a little closer together as you're letting out the breath. Ribs drawing back in towards the center, narrowing slightly.
And then let's place one hand on the belly, somewhere around the navel. You could go below the navel a little bit if you want. And then let's rest the other hand at the center of the chest. And relaxing again into the shoulders. Let's feel for the movements here, down into your belly. And at the same time, sensing any movements into the upper part of the lungs, the chest, the heart. Does one hand move more than the other? How does the breath move each hand here? All right, and then little by little, let's release the hands and just let them rest maybe on our thighs again and take a couple breaths and just maybe revisit those areas where the hands were in your mind's eye, coming back to sense the breath's movements through side ribs, through belly, through chest. And then when you're ready, let's slowly let the eyes open, taking in your surroundings, feeling free to move the head, move the eyes around, notice what you see. Mm -hmm. All right, and then let's go ahead and we're gonna start with some, a big warm up, I guess, for the shoulders. So continuing to sit and feel free to shift your position if your legs are wanting a different position right now, feel free to shift into that. And then let's start with the arms along our sides. So we're gonna try to make as large of a circle as is comfortable in our shoulders. We're gonna send both arms forward and then up as high as feels comfortable. And then you can flip the palms, open them to turn away from you as you try to reach behind you as the arms come down. That's it. So going forward and up, feeling the inhale, flipping the hands, reaching back as you lower the arms down with your exhale. So nice, slow, deliberate movements here into the shoulders. That's it. As you continue to sense each breath. Lovely. Noticing if tension is coming into the neck and shoulders, see if those areas can stay or into the neck anyway, more relaxed. And let's slow or move the circles a little smaller now. So start to gradually make them smaller and smaller so that you know your fingertips are gonna be more pointing out to the sides as you circle. That's it. But you're still emphasizing that reach of the arms behind you and down. That's it. So finding a little more space into the front of the chest as you feel those movements. All right. And then eventually we're drawing tiny circles with our arms pretty much out at shoulder height, chest height. So the arms, yes, they start to feel heavy. So let's take a pause with the arms stretched out and then we're going to change the tempo so we're going to go in small and quick circles <laughs> so find those it's like you're flapping your wings but you're trying to also draw a little bit of a circle with your fingertips maybe the palms are facing down maybe they're facing forward try different positions you'll get into different uh, muscles in the shoulders that's it drawing these small little tight circles Stiffens up the arms a little bit, working into the shoulders. All right, pause. If you need to release the arms at any time for a break, feel free to. We're gonna go in the opposite direction. So we're gonna draw those tiny circles in the other direction. Quick movements as best you can. 
You got it. Keep feeling your breath. Wonderful. And then slow down the circles and start to make them larger and larger in that same direction. Ooh, we are feeling it. Yes. Keep feeling the breath as you go bigger and bigger. You got it. As you go larger, slow it down and feel as the arms reach back. There's a little more space into the chest, keeping that space even as the arms circle forward and down. Let's try for a couple more. Really lovely last one. And then let it go. Whew. And just maybe take a pause. Yeah, you could release the arms along your sides or have the hands on the thighs and just sense the change in your arms. Maybe they feel sort of bigger in your mind's eye. They certainly do for me. They feel airy, <laughs> spacious, and sort of vol voluminous. Yeah. All right. It's finding that tingling sensation. Meet it with another breath. Really good. All right. And then from here, let's go ahead and maybe just interlace the fingers together in front so that we've got the arms up at shoulder height and we can stretch our arms in front like someone's pulling on them to spread our shoulder blades a little wider apart so we can feel like our back ribs move towards the wall behind us. We can let our head release forward a bit as our knuckles reach to the front. Chest moves away from the hands. Let's feel the breath into the back. Can you sense the breath's movements here into the back ribs? Really nice. And then take the arms to reach back behind you, lift through the front, lift through the chest. You can do one of two things. You could let the palms face each other, fingertips reaching back and down. Or if you can, you could also interlace your fingers together behind the back. But if that's not happening in the shoulders, just keep the hands facing one another. And as you pull back and down with the arms, can you lift your chest? Not so much the chin though, maybe keep the chin more towards the chest. You got it and feel the breath there into the front. <sighs> Lovely. All right, and then release the arms, release into the spine. Let's go for a quick side bend over to the right. So we can take our right hand to the ground or to the chair and stretch gently into the left side. Let's feel the breath into our left side here. That space can expand on the inhale as you find more length perhaps with each exhale. Really good. And then coming over to the other side, we can rest into that hand and stretch away from the hip as we still settle into that hip. So we don't wanna stretch so far that we're lifting that sitting bone off our support. That's it. I feel where the breath moves here. Lovely. And then making your way back to center. Whew. All right. We're going to transition into table pose. So you can find your table pose either on the floor with the hands on the ground under the shoulders, or you could also do the table pose standing with your hands on the seat of the chair. If you're using the chair, just make sure it's secure, maybe up against a heavier piece of furniture or wall so it's not gonna slide around, okay? So let's go ahead and feel the hands into our support, knees or feet underneath our hips. And what we're gonna do is kind of sink down. So notice what it feels like to relax with gravity here. Your shoulder blades are going to kind of shrug towards each other. Chest is going to sink. Belly's going to sink a bit with gravity. Okay, and then how can you find a little more support as you push your hands into your support? Feel how your chest lifts a little bit. 
front ribs lift. You find more strength and support around shoulders and into the core. So feel free to find that a couple more times. So you can relax, feel the shoulder blades coming towards each other, and then try to find a little more support as you lift your front body away from gravity a little more. Let's go for one more of those. Okay. And then next time you feel that support into both arms, a little bit of a hug up and in through the belly, what we're going to do is send the right leg back, lifting it up to about hip height, trying our best to keep our hips and shoulders level as we then bend our knee in towards our belly and then push back with our leg. So we could do this in any tempo that feels good for you. You could speed it up and find a nice gliding action through the hip, or you could take it slower. Each time though, you're pushing, kicking almost back through that right heel, right? That's it. And as you kick back with the leg, you can also kick it up a little bit and feel some of the work come into glute and thighs. You got it. Really nice. All right. And then last time, let's stretch that leg back. And the ground isn't too far away if you need that support. We can also find a little more balance and lift the opposite arm. So if the right leg is back, the left arm can stretch either out to the side or you can bring it to stretch forward, finding out the shape that's feeling stable and comfortable in that shoulder. That's it. As we push the ground away, can we again sort of defy gravity a little more through the front of the body? Wonderful, everyone. Release back into table. And then feel free to take a little break. You can come into child's pose if you're on the ground or have a seat in the chair and release forward over the thighs. And just take a moment to feel the change in your breath. And start to gradually slow it down, doing your best to breathe in and out through the nose. All right, and then we'll come back into our table pose. Hands into our support right under the shoulders, knees or feet under the hips. So again, can we feel the support broad and lifted through the front belly, front ribs, trying to keep the head in line with the rest of the spine here too. Try not to let it be pulled down with gravity. And then this time, let's send the left leg back. As we reach it back, just notice if that left hip has lifted a little, can you keep it level with the other side? And then we'll start to move, pulling the knee in towards you and then pushing the knee back. You got it. Feel those movements at any tempo that feels strong and stable for you with your breath. That's it. You can emphasize that kick back. And up, getting into the glute a little bit, into the back of the thigh. And we're trying our best not to move a whole lot in our spine, ribs, waist. So finding some of that core stability here while we're moving our left leg. You got it. Really nice, everybody. Keep it going a couple more breaths. And then last time, let's send the left leg to reach up and back. And if you like, finding more balance with the right arm or opposite arm, stretching out or forward. That's it. See if you can push into that left hand a little more and lift further away from the ground. Really nice. And then take it down. And once again, rest, have a seat on the chair, come into child's pose or any preferred resting shape. Just take a moment and find some stillness as you slow the breath. Good. 
Fantastic. Really good. All right. Let's come back into table again. And here in this table pose, it can be a little tricky on the chair, but there is a way. We're gonna basically curl the toes under if you're down on the ground and see if you can again, push a little more into, our, into the hands so that we might be able to hover the knees slightly off the floor. And just notice how that feels. Notice how it wakes up into the core and let the knees come down to the ground again whenever you need that little bit of a break. Okay, and here, if you're using the chair, you keep the knees bent a little bit, keep most of the weight into the hands and you lift the heels and you try to just feel like your toes wanna lift. <laughs> and that's gonna wake up the core and the upper body. So the next time you do lift the heels or lift the knees, if you're down on the ground, let's see if we could bend the knee a little more, whichever knee you want and lift those toes and then land them and lift the other toes. So we're trying to find maybe three points of contact now. That's it. With as little movement in our torso as possible. You got it. Try for one more on each leg. Great. And then rest. Come back to feel the breath. Slow it down. Feel a full breath in and a nice slow breath out. And then let's take that into our downward dog. So here in table pose, you might take the hands a little further forward. So you have a little more room to start to rock your table pose forward and back. Hips forward, hips back. If you're down on the ground, toes are curled under. And as you push down into your hands, your hips go back, but can you keep the head reaching in front, reaching forward? So try not to lose any of that length in the neck, yeah? And then next, next time the hips go back, let's send them up and back into downward dog. So you might have to walk your feet a little further back. So they're pretty much, if you're standing using the chair, they're under the hips, but knees are welcome to be bent, right? What do you need to maintain some of that space and length here through the spine? Wonderful. From our downward dog, we're gonna take it forward into plank. So when you're ready, hug up and in through the belly and feel your tailbone curl back towards your heels. As you move forward, shoulders are gonna land right above the wrists, whether you're on the ground or using the chair, it's the same shape. And then feeling as you exhale, we're gonna push back into downward dog. So when you're ready, curl the tailbone down again towards the heels, pulling up through the front of the belly, the front of the ribs as you come forward into your plank. And then back one last time in a downward dog. Catch the breath here. We're gonna go back into plank when you're ready for it. Moving forward. And you're welcome to just stay right here, holding your plank pose, or you could try bending one knee, lifting it towards your belly, trying not to round your back, and then bringing that foot back to the floor, feeling the weight shift into the other leg while you bend the other knee in towards you and back. So feel free to explore that movement a couple more times Maybe you're going fast. Maybe you're keeping it slow. What do you need today to keep the breath moving? Wonderful, everyone. Last one on each leg. Very good. And then take it back into downward facing dog. 
feel a couple breaths here. Excellent. And then let's come to walk our feet forward to our hands. We might also walk our hands back to our feet and then we can fold forward over the legs, find a nice release for the upper body. Arms could dangle down. You could keep the hands on the chair or a couple blocks. Just feeling the support of the legs while we do our best to rest through the length of the spine. Maybe rolling the head a little in each direction, nodding yes, nodding no. Wonderful. And then we can either come up through a flat back, moving up through our hips, or we can roll up the spine, curling tailbone down and lifting the head last. Take your time to rise up to standing. Really nice. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's stand and we'll find a little bit of movement first, just in the feet and the ankles. So we might challenge our balance a little bit. So feel free to hold on to something like the chair in front of you or a table, wall, whatever you've got. So let's start by just sensing the ground through our feet, feeling the tailbone nice and heavy towards the floor as the head is light, as though it's being pulled up towards the ceiling above us. Now, are we able to keep all that sense of length through the spine as we tip forward and rise up onto our toes, heels lift, any amount. And then we're gonna lower back to the heels just before they land, let's lift them again. So let's stay with these heel raises, lifting and lowering the heels in a controlled way. So maybe slowing things down a little bit, especially perhaps on the way down. Can you come down a little slower with maybe a little more control as best you can? And again, if this is challenging the balance too much and you can't really enjoy the heel raise aspect, hold on to something. That's perfectly good. You got it. Feel the little squeeze of the uh, calf muscles when you reach the top and you slowly come back down, yeah? Lovely. Last one, let's lift the heels and try to keep them off the floor as high as feels comfortable in your toes, trying to feel the weight across the pads of your feet a little more. Lovely. And then take it down back to the heels. Okay. Whew. So we got a little bit of a calf workout there. So let's go ahead and Find a couple of these squats where we're going to let our knees bend straight forward. So our hips are going straight down towards our heels. This is going to give a bit of a stretch into the backs of our ankles and calves, and then we'll straighten back up. So bending and straightening. So we're getting a little bit of movement here into our ankles. You might feel that pull on the back of the ankle. So just go as far forward with your knees as feels comfortable in both the knees and the ankles without lifting the heels. You got it. Try for two more. Trying to feel the weight into the feet where the knees are able to go forward instead of knocking towards each other. Okay. So trying to keep the knees moving apart. Next time we go down, let's maybe hold this for just a breath or two. So the hips are down or right underneath our shoulders, right above our ankles. And we're feeling some strength potentially into our legs. Let's feel it for one last breath. Very good. And then push into the feet and come on upright. Wonderful. All right, now we're gonna go into the more traditional chair pose shape. So quite different where we're going to, you might even take your fingertips into those hip creases at the front. 
And when we bend our knees, we're gonna also move our bum back behind us and down. So now instead of the hips being right above our heels, they're pushing behind and down. That's it. So can you still feel a sense of lift through the belly as we send both arms out in front? So we're gonna to start to move into a bit of a twist through the upper body. Try to keep navel, pubic bone facing straight ahead as we bring our right arm to stretch back, turning to the right, and then we can sweep the arm back around facing forward. Left arm can pull back, finding our twist to the left and then sweeping it around. One more in each direction, trying your best to hold chair pose from sort of pelvis down. Wonderful, coming back to the front. Let's lift the arms, find chair for one more breath, hips back and down. And then on the exhale, let's fold it forward, straighten gently through the legs. You'll feel more of a stretch now. Hands are welcome to come to the chair or to a couple blocks. A couple blocks could come in handy for what we're gonna do next if you're not using the chair. Let's take a bit of time to slow the breath here. All right. And then with the hands on either the blocks or the floor or the chair, we're gonna step our right foot back. As we step our right foot back, we might have to move that left foot a little closer to the front. That's it. So we're in our lunge, whatever that lunge looks like for you. Let's stay here and feel the reach of the right leg back as the chest is wide to the front. Hands at any height that lets you be here with space and breath. Then can we have a little less weight on the hands and push into more into that left foot so that we might be able to send one arm back. If you need to keep one hand on the chair, do that or send the other arm back. Feel as we reach back with both arms, we're gonna slowly let that pull ourselves upright more, shoulders above our hips. That's it. And then we can send the arms up. We're finding a little more balance here as we have our back heel up, our front knee bent. Let's feel this high lunge here for another breath. Really good. And then take the hands back to your support, whether it's a couple blocks, the floor or the chair. You wanna feel now more support into your hands because what we're gonna do, you might have to shift more weight forward into your hands to push into both hands. Let's see if we can lift our front foot. Yes, so hug up and in through the belly, bend your knee, we're in that plank with the knee bent and we're stepping it back and finding full plank. You got it, feel one last breath there. And then coming back into your downward dog. Maybe you're wanting more of a break. Child's pose might be good. We're sitting on the chair, releasing over the sides. If downward dog doesn't feel good right now. You wanna be where you can sense the breath and giving it a chance to slow down, become a little steadier. Slow down the heart rate, slow down the exhales. Good. All right, and then from our downward dog, we can walk our feet forward again, taking all the weight into our legs, releasing the upper body over their support. And then we can again, either roll up through the spine if that feels good for you, or come up with more of a flat back, moving more from your hips, rising to standing.
Well done. This one I'll demonstrate using the blocks instead. So let's first find chair pose again. Send the hips back and down as the knees bend. You got it. Bring both arms to stretch out in front. So now we can find maybe a little more movement in our arms here. So let's go like this. Let's lift our right arm up, circle it opening to the space behind you as you find that twist and then circle it back to facing forward. Left arm is gonna reach up, circle back, down and forward. Find that one more time in each direction. That's it. And again, trying to be mindful of keeping pubic bone facing forward. Moving more through the spine. Yes. And then lift both arms and feel your chair pose for another breath. Wonderful. Release over the legs, finding a nice softening into the neck. That's it. Enjoying a nice stretch through the back of the legs as we're here for another breath. So hands can be on blocks or on the seat of the chair or on the floor so that we can now step our left foot back. With our left foot back, our right foot is forward. We might have to wiggle that right foot further forward. Move as you need to to find your lunge here. Stay strong through your back leg. That's it. And see if you can open up a little more through the chest, maybe coming up onto your fingertips. Beautiful. And transferring little by little more weight into your right leg, right foot, as we try to lift one or both arms back. You got it, feel another breath here. And as you keep reaching back with your arms, let that action kind of pull you up. <laughs> Shoulders above the hips. If you need to reposition your feet, of course, go for it. Find stable legs as we lift the arms to any height, pausing in your high lunge here. That's it, everyone. Lovely, taking the hands back down onto your support. Blocks, chair, floor. Where can you bring both palms into that support, right? So as we push more down into our hands, can we pull up a little more through the front and try to lift and bend our front knee? That's it. We're in that hovering plank, you got it. And then we're stepping that right foot back into plank. Pausing there for a breath. Wonderful, everybody. Send it back. Downward dog. Downward dog in the blocks is actually lovely. Gives me nice space. So again, where do you need to be to find the breath? Slower and smoother. Maybe it's child's pose. Maybe it's sitting on the chair. Maybe it's downward dog. That's it. Wonderful. And then coming back into downward dog when you like. So we can step our feet forward to the hands again. And bringing all the weight into our feet so we can sweep ourselves up to standing and release and relax the arms and just maybe take a moment of stillness here. You're welcome to close your eyes if you feel stable or steady or simply just soften your gaze and just once again, tune in to feel the changes within your body, with your breath, really nice. Mm. All right, so now let's have fun using the wall. Um, you know, if, yeah, let's use the wall. It's gonna be nice and 
sort of easy or gentler with the upper body strength. But I really love um, exploring these push-up movements um, in, an, in an easier position with less load on the hands and wrists and shoulders, because you really get a sense of where the support comes from that you can then tune into when we're, you know, further down. So if you happen to have wall space, hopefully you do, you've got a door you can close or something. You just need wall space where you can place your palms on the wall where we have, we're sort of leaning our support into the wall. So we're finding a wall plank. Our feet are a little further than, you know, arm's length. So arm and a half, something like that. Maybe not quite. So you've got your palms into the wall, probably at your kind of ideal position right now, shoulder, chest height, something like that. And so feel this, maybe feel that sort of slumping movement where you kind of just let, you know, belly move towards the wall, chest kind of slump towards the wall, right? And then can you find more support as you push the wall away from you, you're gonna feel the front of your body move a little further away from the wall, right? So find that strength into your arms and then rise up onto your toes, okay? Finding that heel raise again. And we're gonna keep the heels off the floor as we try to bend our elbows and straighten our elbows. So we're doing a push up, and you might be like, oh, this is super easy. So how can we make it more challenging? We could slow it down, right? Go as slow as you can on the way towards the wall and then a slow push away from the wall. Noticing if any other parts of your body are moving, if this is going on, if your belly again moves closer to the wall, can you keep belly moving back? even as you bring your head towards the wall. Doesn't have to touch that. We don't have to get our nose to the wall or anything like that. Okay. And then we can change up. What I like about the wall is we can change our hand position. What happens if we bring our arms wider? So find, you know, maybe a wider width. Maybe it's shoulder width. Maybe it's wider than shoulders. And then try your push up there. As you feel these movements going on in your shoulders, elbows, wrists, can you feel the support remain into your upper back, hugging up and in through the belly? You got it. And so each of these hand positions is going to work differently into your body. So let's start, maybe try hands closer together, hands as close together as you want to bring them. What happens when we bend and straighten our elbows with this movement? We might even try turning fingers to face each other more or to turn away from each other more. Experiment, that's it. <laughs> and keep feeling what is being challenged in your body right now. Maybe triceps with the hands closer together, or you could also bring the hands further down, right? With them further down, we're asking more from elbows and wrists and different movements, strengths into shoulders and back. You got it. All right, and then find your sort of ideal um, plank. That's it. And feel how more weight is in your hands. As we shift more weight into one foot, can we lift the other knee? And then lower that. Bring your weight into that foot, lift the other knee. And back to both feet. You got it. And then push into the, the wall and send the hips back, heels down. We're at a downward dog at the wall. You can always walk your hands further down for more stretch. Really nice. Okay. And then walk the feet forward so you can stand into your feet, release the hands off the wall. Good. 
All right. And then at this point, we're going to take ourselves down onto our belly, but we're going to do it through um, plank, some push up movements. So let's come into a standing forward bend. So if you're not coming all the way to the floor, I can show you a couple things you can do on the chair and then eventually um, you can do your own thing. So let's bend the knees enough to bring the hands to the floor or the chair so we can step back into downward facing dog. That's it. And from our downward dog, let's come forward into plank. So you're welcome to bring your knees to the ground if your hands are on the floor. Your knees can come to the ground at any time, okay? While we can practice a couple of push-ups here. So what happens when we bend the elbows and when we straighten the elbows? Any amount, right? So you're finding what you can do with while keeping some support up and in through the belly, strong through the upper body into the shoulders. You got it. Feeling a couple more if you can at any pace, any tempo with breath. Really nice. And then if you're coming all the way to the floor, we can take it down all the way to the ground, trying to lower ourselves down with as much control as we can. Knees are welcome to be on the ground for this if you want. And then relax and rest your front body into the support of the ground. Really good. And then let's take our arms out like goalpost arms on the floor beside us. So our elbows are bent around shoulder height. We've got our palms facing the floor. Actually, let's turn our palms to face each other. Yeah, so the thumbs are up. So we can do one of two things with the head. We could let it rest on the ground or support, or we could let it hover off the floor. It's up to you. So let's see if we can lift our arms out to the sides, try to keep our thumbs higher than our elbows. So maybe take a look at your thumbs and notice if your elbows are lifting higher, can you lift your thumbs a little higher? And then lower everything back and lift again. So we can do this a few times, lifting and lowering with the rhythm of our breath. Head could stay down or head could lift. It's up to you. If the head is lifting, keep the back of the neck long. So rather than lifting your gaze forward, just keeping it more down. You got it. If you wanna challenge a little more through the legs, you could also raise them as you lift your arms and head. That's it. Try for a couple more with your breath, working into our back. All the while, can we still feel the support and lift of our front belly? When we lift one more time, arms, potentially legs and head, your choice. Can we hold that position? Maybe we wanna send the arms wide or out like a T-shape as they lift a little higher. Let's feel that for another breath. Wonderful, everybody. Take the hands down to the floor, feet to the ground. We can push ourselves up. Yes, so finding that upper body strength to push us up and back into maybe a child's pose or any preferred resting shape here. That's it. So how are things feeling in the back? Just let's feel the sensations there with each breath. Wonderful, everybody. Yep. Now we're gonna take it down onto our back. So take your time to transition to that shape. And if you need pillows and you know blankets, things like that to make the ground comfortable, 
do so. All right, so let's just take a bit of time. We're not quite at, at Shavasana time, but we're getting really close to that final resting shape. Of course, if you're ready for it, by all means, go there. Hmm. And let's just take a bit of time to sense the floor into our back, into the back of the head, the backs of the shoulders, and wide into the back of our pelvis. So let's keep our feet on the floor with our knees bent here. And let's begin with a couple of pelvic tilt movements with each breath. So if you like, you could rest your hands on your belly or you could just relax the arms beside you. So here with each inhale, let's feel how the belly expands with the breath in. And then feel how the belly sinks and settles with the breath out. And then as you feel those movements into your belly with each breath, let's also let the pelvis start to tip forward on the inhale. So more weight comes into your tailbone, your lower back is gonna arch away from the floor. And then with the exhale, can we feel the back of the waist make more contact with the ground as we're finding a little hug up through the belly? So breath moves in, tailbone points down, lower back, back waist lifts. Exhaling, flattening into that back waist space as the tailbone gets lighter. So not quite lifting the hips just yet, just finding first this movement in the pelvis as we breathe. And this movement powered by our breath with little, as little tension as possible here into shoulders, neck, and jaw. Really nice. Now, can we find a happy medium space in the back of our pelvis? Find that center space where we're neither tipped forward, so our low back is off the floor, nor are we really flattening or pressing our low back into the floor. So somewhere in between, that's it. And then let's go ahead and feel more weight into our right foot. As we try to lift our left foot, knee comes above the hip. You got it. Let's take our right hand to press gently into our left thigh. And just notice what you feel there. You got it. Lovely, one more breath, maybe finding a sense of support through the belly. And then can we keep that support and lift the other foot? <laughs> so now the other knee is above the hip. We're still pressing our right hand into our left thigh. Let's send the left arm up towards the sky. So as we keep our right hand pressing into left thigh, left thigh pressing into right hand, Let's move our other limbs. So cross body movement can be good for the brain. As we let the left arm come back, the right foot can move towards the floor and then back up. We got it. Finding any movement you can here without coming off center through the back of our pelvis, without lifting the back waist higher away from the floor. That's it. Try for two more. Really nice. And then we can release both feet down to the floor and relax. So release the hands. Checking in with each side of the body. How are you feeling? Really good. And again, feel free to find a couple pelvic tilts just to feel. Feel where the center point is in the back of your pelvis. When we do pelvic tilts, we're rolling that center point right down to the tailbone and back to the back of the waist. So find the space in between. That's it. And then we try to land into that space in between and stay there with some support up and in through the belly, back to the ribs, nuzzling into the floor while we bring our right foot off the floor 
and press our left hand into that thigh. So just noticing, what does this do for you as you find a little bit of this pressure and resistance, how it wakes up some different muscles in and around the core, but we're still able to breathe, okay? So keeping that, can we lift the other foot and send the right arm towards the sky? So we're gonna to start to move these limbs that are free, right? So sending the right arm back, left uh, leg down. Your knee can stay bent or it could straighten, it's up to you. What can you do moving your limbs off center while trying to remain centered? <laughs> That's the challenge. So it could be small movements, it could be large movements. Find what you can do on this side with breath. Really good. That's it. Let's go for the last two. Wonderful, everyone. We can release when you're ready. Feet back to the floor. Whoo, arms along our sides. We can lift and slide our shoulder blades down our back a little more. Feel our arms supporting us as we press them down into the floor. And then let's go ahead and roll our spine up into bridge, push into our feet, curl the tailbone to lift away from the ground. That's it. So now the hips have lifted to whatever height you can hold with comfort, with breath here, with strength and support. Pressing the feet into the floor, making deeper footprints there as we feel the breath moving into the front of the body. Wonderful. And then when you're ready, let's take ourselves back down, rolling the spine to the floor, slowly from top to bottom. All right, take the arms to rest out like a T-shape. We can let the knees, windshield wiper side to side here. Maybe bring the feet wider apart for this one. Feet staying on the mat as they go side to side. And if you wanna stay on the one side, you could even stack your knees and come into a reclined twist on that side for a couple of breaths, yeah. So as your knees are to one side, your upper body turns in the other direction, feeling some of that space again into the side body with breath. Really nice. And if you want taking it over to the other side, knees can stay separate or they could stack one over the other for a little more spinal twist. It's up to you, where do you need this on this side? As we let our head and shoulders relax in the opposite direction of the knees. That's it, feel the breath. And then when you're ready, we can return to center and let ourselves rest here into the support of the ground. So finding out the position that feels best for you, I'm gonna keep my knees bent, but you might feel just great stretching out the legs, maybe having a bolster pillow under the knees or thighs. Feel where your body wants to land into some soft stillness here to feel the effects of your practice and to give yourself permission to let go and feel the movements of the breath continuing to flow through you.
And then we can slowly start to deepen the breath. If you have the time and the inclination to continue to rest here, feel free to do so. You don't need to come up and say goodbye. It's up to you. If you're ready to move on, start to gently reawaken your body with some movements through the hands and feet. We did a fair bit on the wrist today, so some circling there might feel good. Hmm. And then feel free to find a nice full body stretch, lengthening long from head to tail, from hands to feet. <sighs> and then resting for a couple breaths with your knees bent, rolling over to one side. You can make a pillow with your bottom arm if you like. Wonderful. And then whenever you're ready, you can use your hands, slowly push yourself up to any comfortable seated shape. Hmm. And however you've chosen to sit here, just find a nice easy posture. And let the palms rest together in front of the heart. And so you can take a moment to give thanks for your practice, giving thanks for taking the time to be here, present with your body, your breath. And bowing down to your practice and everyone else who shared it with you today. Namaste. Oh.